what happens if you take a general purpose wheeled armored fighting vehicle and slap a big gun on top of it? Exactly, a light tank which will get stuck in the mod because it has wheels. No, but seriously, what do you get? You know, there have been many different combinations of many different chassis and guns from many different countries. And this does not exclude... They just went up and took a striker and mounted a 105mm gun on it and called it M1128 mobile gun system. Interesting. Very interesting. So interesting that I decided to make a video about it. So hello and welcome and enjoy this video. The M1128 mobile gun system, short MGS, is an armored vehicle with 8 wheels which is part of the Striker family. It has a 105mm tank gun and is built on the Canadian LAV-3 light armored vehicle. It's produced by General Dynamics Land Systems for the US Army. By 1992 the Army made the armored gun system a top priority. The armored gun system was a US Army competition at that time to design a light tank to replace the M551 Sheridan and tow equipped Humvees. They wanted it to be 20 tons and that it could be dropped from planes. Basically, they wanted this thing to be light enough to parachute but heavy enough to crush the dreams of Iraqi kids. The army planned to get 300 AGS systems for the 82nd Airborne Division and 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment. Four companies competed for the contract. In June 1992, the army chose the FMC Close Combat Vehicle Light Proposal, which was later called the M8 Armored Gun System, short AGS. However, in 1996, the army cancelled the AGS program because, surprise surprise, their budget was cut. The MGS competition started from a Canadian need for an armored combat vehicle. In January 1999, General Dynamics Land Systems from Canada, together with General Motors, added its low-profile turret onto an LAV-3. This turret was an improvised version of the one used on the GD Teledyne Expeditionary Tank, which had competed in the AGS contest back in the 1980s. In October 1999, the US Army chief shared his idea for a lighter and more mobile force. He wanted mid-weight brigades that could balance heavy armor and infantry. This bright idea gave birth to the Interim Armored Vehicle Program which included the MGS, short for Mobile Gun System, or as some might call it, we can't afford real tanks anymore. Unlike the earlier AGS, which was designed to fight enemy armor, the MGS was meant to take out bunkers, buildings, weapon positions, humans and anything else unlucky enough to be breathing nearby. A team from GM Defense of Canada and General Dynamics Land Systems offered a version of their low-profile turret assault gun to meet the MGS requirement. General Dynamics handled most of the work on the MGS. United Defense LP proposed an M8 armored gun system and two versions of a light tactical vehicle. One with the AGS turret and a 105mm gun and another one with a 90mm gun. Two other companies competed for the infantry carrier but didn't submit offers for the MGS. In November 2000, GMGDLS won the contract for both the infantry carrier and the MGS. The MGS was later officially named the M1128. However, GM GDLS had to pass work on the IAV, short for Interim Armored Vehicle. I don't know why, but they just had to stop. After the contract was awarded, the MGS initial operational capability date was pushed back two years from December 2001 to November 2003. In the meantime, the army let GM GDLS use the Striker ATGM variant instead of the MGS. GDLS delivered the first of eight pre-production MGS in July 2002. In March 2004, the army decided to send four AGS vehicles to the 82nd Airborne Division for it to be used in Iraq. But by June, they hit the brakes, 
suddenly wondering if the MGS could actually meet the 82nd Airborne Division's needs. In August, the Army did an airdrop test using a striker vehicle with the same weight of the MGS. They found issues with the MGS airdrop capability since it was one of the heavier striker models and there were ongoing problems with the autoloader. By January 2005, the Army decided not to field the AGS due to a lack of spare parts and instead focused on the MGS, which they planned to start deploying by summer 2006. In October 2004, the Pentagon gave the green light for a small-scale production of the MGS after a review by the Defense Acquisition Board. By December 2004, the Army gave GDLS a $206 million contract to build 95 strikers, including the first 14 MGS systems. After all, what's a few hundred million dollars between friends? During this phase, 14 vehicles were built and General Dynamics worked on fixing issues with the ammunition handling system to make it more reliable. In August 2004, the Pentagon also approved making a total of 72 MGS vehicles. Then, in August 2008, the Army gave GDLS a $226.5 million contract to produce 62 more MGS vehicles. In February 2008, the Pentagon approved full-scale production of the MGS after a review. However, the Army decided to delay starting full production until they could confirm that fixes to the MGS were working. They pushed back full production in 2010. That same year, GDLS started adding explosive reactive armor to the MGS units being produced. By late 2013, the US Army wanted to bring back an air-droppable vehicle that could provide fire support for assault missions, a capability which went missing since the Sheridan was retired in 1997. General Dynamics first thought about adapting the wheeled Striker MGS for this role, but ended up using a version of the Griffin Light tank instead. In May 2021, the Army decided to get rid of all mobile gun systems by the end of 2022. They made this decision after finding that the autoloader was too expensive to maintain and that the M1128 hadn't been upgraded with a double V hull. It was more practical to remove the MGS and focus on improving firepower by adding 30mm cannons and Krause J mounts to the strikers. This would give better firepower options that wouldn't be lost by removing the MGS. The MGS commander and gunner sit in the turret basket, which is designed to keep them a bit separated from the ammunition in case of an explosion. However, a government accountability office report from May 2001 said that the army was unsure if this setup would protect against secondary explosions or fires from the main gun's ammo. The MGS has a low-profile turret that is small and stable and it comes with a 105mm M68A1E4 cannon, which has a fume extractor and an autoloader. It's mainly built to support infantry in combat. While it can handle some tank roads, it's not designed to fight against main battle tanks. The MGS can hold 18 rounds of ammo for its main gun. 8 rounds in the autoloader's carousel and 10 more in a storage area at the back of the vehicle. It can fire up to 10 rounds per minute. The MGS was originally designed for the Canadian Army which didn't need it to be transportable by a C-130 plane. However, the US Army did need this feature so the design had to be changed to lower the MGS height so it could fit inside the aircraft. They lowered the turret into the hole, but this created new issues. The closer distance between the muzzle brake and the hull led to blast pressure problems. They fixed it by covering the muzzle brake with a metal sheet. Looking at the secondary armament, the coaxial weapon on the MGS is a 7.62mm 240 machine gun. The commander's weapon can be either a 12.7mm M2 Browning machine gun or a 40mm MK-19 grenade launcher. 
Anyways, that was all I have to say for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.